Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Geo. I'm one of the new casters for Ubisoft's brand new Rainbow Six EU League and APAC North League. And today I wanted to have a look back on the games that were played across all three of the leagues that we have right now and pick out some of the craziest. So let's take a look. EU League, Empire versus Virtus Pro. Coming into this game, it was safe to say that almost everyone was expecting Virtus Pro to come out on top. They defeated Empire in the Russian Major League Finals and taken first place in the EU Open Clash that preceded the EU League. Even the whispers in the wind from scrim reports stated that Virtus Pro were a scary team, that if you didn't pay attention, they would gun you down in a heartbeat. Rusk and WTG were scary in and of themselves, but with a support in Pasha who came away with the most clutches of the team in Pro League Season 11, and a decisive, swiftly moving hard support in a mission, the team looked completely stacked. However, entering into the very first game of the new leagues, the fates began to turn. Virtus Pro took just one map on their attacking half after Empire looked coordinated and rejuvenated on the defense. With excellent projectile play, as well as a constant suffocating of Virtus Pro's attempts, Empire came away with a 7-1 victory, disgracing the fan favourites. Shepard was the star of the show, with a 2.10 rating, 12-1 KD, 100% KOST and a 1.5 KPR, but the fact the whole team had positive KD and every single entry kill was a testament to the precedent Empire had now set. APAC North League, Electrify vs Scars this was a game where no one knew what to expect. Electrify Esports were a team that had literally no public view prior to the APAC North League. They were formed by combining the teams who competed in the Chinese Taipei qualifiers for the APAC North League, but this was a region that had never competed in Pro League, nor had any Western broadcast time. So they were an enigma. Scars, on the other hand, were the Korean Pro League Season 11 champions, but that was just about the only first place accolade they managed to accumulate. Running with a stand-in player and some mixed results in the past, it was hard to judge who would win. Well, pretty soon it looked like it would be Scars. Taking the first five attacking rounds on Clubhouse in such swift succession, three of which included successful plans and three of which were flawless rounds, it seemed impossible for Electrify to be able to scrape things back in their favour. But once the side switched at the half, it was another story. Scars' defence looked weak and exploitable, while Electrify found confidence in their attack. They took themselves five attacking rounds with three plants, sending the game into overtime. It was the Dark Horses taking the Korean champions to their very limits, and they did it. Electrify clinched out the final two rounds, and in the most unexpected match of APAC North, cemented themselves as a force to be reckoned with. NA League, Disrupt versus Oxygen. This game might just go down as one of the most infamous regular season matches in Rainbow Six history. Coming into it, the expectations were fairly clear. The experienced former Reciprocity squad making Oxygen Esports were the favourites against new team Disrupt Gaming. Veli described them as having walking highlight reels on the roster. Disrupt, while consisting of two of Oxygen's former players in Nix and Retro, were relatively unproven and likely still undergoing the building of a report, especially with new player NJR. It seemed obvious to expect a smooth ride for Oxygen. And then shit went down. We thought it was spicy once we saw the first Ash target ban come in, but we had no idea what we were in for. Disrupt evening things out at the second round was exciting, but overtaking Oxygen in the scoreline by round three was eye-opening. Suddenly, this new roster didn't look so inferior to their more exalted opponents. But then things went south. Due to what he claims was a cloud-saving issue, Nyx got caught with illegal skins, and suddenly that momentum was halted and the rounds revoked from Disrupt. This led to a decisive win on map 1 from Oxygen, and the hope for Disrupt started to dwindle. That said, after yet more skin problems and some unexpected hot micing, huge problem My hair for Disrupt, is a, skin a mess. Disrupt were able to claw themselves a victory on Consulate and a very, very narrow loss on Villa. It was a series that won't soon be forgotten, and Oxygen proved the predictions right, but Disrupt showed a tenacity of their efforts and a mental fortitude that would rarely be attributed to such a young, fresh team. And despite that scoreline, set up one of the craziest expectations moving forward. 
So I think it's safe to say that the first week of all three of these leagues has been pretty insane. We've seen a lot of games that we didn't expect to go the way that they did, and all of these storylines starting to form about these teams and these players, and are they going to be as good as we thought? Are this team going to be as bad as we thought? It's going to be pretty interesting to see, and after just two play days in each of the regions so far, everything is already pretty exhilarating. So I hope to see you guys next week for the play days in week two of all three of these leagues. I, of course, will be casting EU League and APAC North League. Not NA League, but I will be watching as much of that as I possibly can, even though it, it's past my bedtime. I hope you guys are enjoying the league so far, not just because of the teams, of course, but, you know, us, the new talent, we're trying to bring you something really good. I'm always open to feedback, so let me know. My Twitter DMs are open, my comments are available, my Discord is available, so I just want to get better and be sure that you guys are getting the best show possible. But I'm very excited to see you all on the broadcast next week, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.